Hey, what's up, everybody? Fat Man Scoop here. Undisputed voice of the club, two-time Grammy Award winner, whatever you want to call it. Grammy, MTV, whatever you want to call it, man. If you're watching this, you're probably interested in my custom drop. So I'm going to break down a couple of things before we even get started. Number one, chances are this is a replay because I did this live once and I'm running around the world like a maniac and I probably am playing a replay. So look, there's two things you can do, okay? I'm going to give you some tips and tricks in this webinar. If you don't want that, you can just go on down to the part with the custom drops and watch that. It's up to you. If not, sit here and have some fun with me. And listen, if there's any questions you have, you can always go to scoop at fatmanscoop.com and either myself or my assistant Ari will hit you up. So let's get right into the webinar, okay? What am I going to do in this webinar? Well, let me just make it simple. Realistically, I'm going to tell you who I am and what I do, just in case you don't know. I'm going to give you my tips and tricks to enhance your DJ sets, some of the simple things that I personally do. I'm definitely going to bullshit around stammer and most likely lose my overall train of thought as I usually do. It's the ADD kicking in, and at least I can be real with myself in Jesus' name and say, you know something, I have ADD, I'm a goddamn mess, and look, hey, look, whatever it is, it is what it is, as they say in the ghetto. I'm going to give you some of my ideas, my thoughts, and my opinions on shit going on in the DJ world. I'm going to break down all the info that you need to know about my custom drops and imaging packs, which is probably why you're here, and what they are what's included and why you should get one and I'll answer any questions you have like I said scoop at fatmanscoop.com either I will answer it myself if I'm not traveling or on the road or whatever if not my assistant Ari will answer it and he'll get it to me and I'll I'll tell him what to say and then he'll say it and you, the bottom line you'll get an answer okay so your first question is most likely this right is sitting here and watching this gonna be a waste of my damn time well, the answer to that is no, and let me explain why. If you happen to be a person that is watching anything that is not a documentary on Netflix, if you watch cat videos on YouTube, dumbass cat videos, not to say the cats are dumb because I've had three cats in my life and I loved all of them. One was named Theo and he killed every fucking mouse when I lived in the country. This guy was fucking amazing. Just, there you go, the ADD. Let me keep moving. Fighting videos on world star hip hop. If you're watching porno, that desensitizes you. I can tell you from my own personal experience, like lay off the pornos, man, because it desensitizes you. If you're not watching shit that Elon Musk or Bill Gates would not watch, then this is absolutely not going to be a waste of your time. Why not watch a guy like me? And I'm not going to list all my accomplishments, but I told you before. Two-time Grammy Award winner, MTV Music Award winner, undisputed voice of the club, uh, most recognizable voice in, in music. You know, myself, Morgan Freeman, we both have very recognizable voices and we both have the same last name, Freeman. Go figure that one out. A 20-year veteran of music, radio, and TV game. Why not listen to that guy? Like I said, I can just list all this stuff. Songs with Skrillex, Hardwell, TJR, Mac J, Diplo, Jaws, Major Lazer, Missy Elliott, Timberland, Mariah Carey. Listen, man, I don't have time to run it all down, man. Look at Wikipedia, man. And they don't even have all the songs. I've done hundreds of remixes, and that's not even counting the remixes that stole my voice. It's not even counting that. So let me just tell you a little bit about me, just in case you don't know, or you want a refresher. My name is Fat Man Scoop. And that's me right there, you know, pretty much. I'm the undisputed voice of the club. I go around the world 48 weeks of the year, overseas, doing what I have to do, performing to various crowds around the world. You know, this is in Vienna, Austria. Uh, this right here is in... <laughs> gist of it. This is in Poland. Um, hey, I feel like I'm the best at what I do. If I don't say I'm the best, who's going to say it for me? And that's a fact. Um, this is in Portugal. This is in, um, where is this? This is in, um, I was just there three weeks ago. What the hell? 
um, where the horn? Cyprus. This was in Cyprus with my man DJ S7S. Um, this was in Australia. I look like a used car salesman or, or old school cop. This was in Germany years ago. Australia. Um, this is just me thinking that I'm worth three million dollars after taxes. This is in Egypt, um, Bahrain. This is in Australia right here. Pretty much what I do on a regular basis. <laughs> I'm blessed to do this, man. And this is me when I used to work at Tommy Boy Records in the rap department, promoting records, breaking naughty by nature, House of Pain, De La Soul. And that's actually where the custom drops got started. But we'll get to that in a little while. Um, I'm known and respected by old school, new school, everybody in between. Cardi B, uh, Big Nasty, Jillionaire, Major Lazer, The Game, Diplo, Jaws, Hardwell, my girl Cardi B. Fat Man Scoop, Cardi B, Fat Man Scoop, Cardi B, whatever I say. Y'all gotta do whatever I say. Y'all gotta do whatever I say. Y'all gotta do y'all too, y'all too, y'all. Y'all too, y'all too, y'all too. Uh, W&W, Hardwell's guys. Uh, Usher, of course. Good time, good friend of mine. Skrillex, Killer Noise, Little John, myself, Sujit from uh, Scam Artists. Timmy Trumpet, Will Sparks, uh, Joel Fletcher, The Roots, Eric Bellinger. Amazing writer, wrote, wrote everything for Usher, like, amazing guy. The Weeknd, okay, I this happened to be taken on The Weeknd, with The Weeknd. Sean Paul, that the record that I did with him in this session is amazing. You'd never expect me to do it. Will Smith, I got my arm around this guy like I'm dating him, but fine, it was Will Smith. Um, You know, I'm, I know people in sports. Cam Chancellor. All of the Legion of Doom right there, the Legion of Boom, like, they, they were amazing years ago. Come on, Richard Sherman, like, cut it out. Uh, entertainment, Hodor, come on, Kevin Hart, everybody, Obama, shit, I done done remixes with Santa. Like, come on, I'm moving around out here. So I'm, you know, I'm very well known, very well respected, and I can say that with confidence because I am. I used to never say it, but I am, but forget that. Basically, I'm just letting you know, I've done it all, man. And if you're new to DJ and club life or voice imaging, here's a little bit about me. Again, I said it earlier, I'm not saying it again, period. Serious, seriously, I'm not saying it. You can look for millions of songs with my voice on them. Every genre of music, pop, rock, hip-hop, dance, reggae, EDM, funk, R&B, disco. Listen, the list goes on and on and on. I am probably the most recognizable voice in the world other than like James Earl Jones and Morgan Freeman, period. And I've currently been the voice of the New York Knicks, Denver Broncos, Miami Dolphins, Denver Nuggets, Usher OMG Tour, Chris Brown, R. Kelly. And listen, don't talk to me about R. Kelly with the kid jokes and the peeing jokes. Listen, I was there. I didn't see it, but I was there. I didn't see no kids. Don't come to me about that. I was there on that tour, but I never saw a kid. I never saw piss. I never saw a bottle of piss. I never saw nothing. So that had nothing to do with me, but I was there. Anyway, I am the most sample voice in music, period. And I can say that with full confidence because it just is a fact. Um, and again, one of the most recognizable voices on the planet, and that's a fact right there. James Earl Jones, that's another one. Let's get ready to rumble, man. Let's get ready to rumble. Morgan Freeman and myself, and again, we have the same last name. We could be related. We both have the voice, so go figure. Basically, there is no club, arena, stadium, venue where commu commercial music is played that my voice is not heard, period. Now, enough with the backpacking, because I'm not really into that. I don't like that kind of shit, but I got to say it so you, you know, you look at me and maybe you respect me a little bit more, or if you don't respect me, fuck it, you don't respect me, and you won't respect me, and forget respect. Let's just, you know, as Birdman said, put a little respect on my name, but forget that. So one more time, why should you waste your time watching this webinar? If nothing else, you're going to see how somebody like myself thinks, you're going to hear my opinions, you can get inside my head get sane advice, and also pick up some tips. So, I'm going to break down my custom drops packs for you, but 
I'm also going to make this interesting, okay? So if you stay here until the end, I will give you a way to possibly get a drops pack for free. Why not? Just keep watching, and you'll see exactly how it goes down. Now, let's go. Or as I say, let's go! Period. So listen, if someone was to give you tips on how to improve your set, the way you do business, and how to move from a guy who's been in the business for 20 years and has had a lot of success, some failures because you learn from them, but more importantly, stay in power, would you listen to them? Then what you need to do is put all the dumb shit down you're doing, like Instagram and whatever you're doing, Big Booty, uh, Volume 33 on DVD, or by you know whatever you're doing, BigBooty.com, whatever it is, put it down. Listen up, man, because I'm about to just kick a couple of things to you. Now, if you're a beginner, I'm going to put you up on game. And if you're a veteran or you're a smart ass or you feel you're a know-it-all, then I'm going to be validating all of your conclusions. Congratulations, you're a fucking genius. Great, good for you. But before we get started, I am not holier than you. I am not holier than thou. I'm nobody's Jesus, nothing. I make mistakes. I don't know everything. No one does. Even the... The best, biggest person in the world knows nothing. Because when you think you know nothing, you actually know. When you think you know everything, you actually know nothing. But forget that. The info that I'm giving is based off the mistakes that I've made or the things that have worked in the club for me. So that's what I'm giving you. DJ tip number one. Presentation is key. Okay, now let me break this down. How you look, what, what feelings you inspire, it's very important, especially early in your career when you don't have that that um, respect, you don't have that that uh, persona, you don't have that um, reputation. It's really important. I'll give you a good example. There's a bunch of people that are really, really good at this kind of stuff. My man at Young Chow, he's amazing. My brother, Savvy Davis, uh, Savvy Davis Jr., he's amazing. Eric Bellinger, amazing. Charlie Sloth in the UK, at Charlie Sloth, amazing. These guys are amazing at making you feel like you, you know, like, like, like they are winners and they are on top and every picture looks good and it inspires confidence and you gotta, you have to, Carry yourself in the same way, even if that's not the truth. Even if you're homeless and you're living in a, in a car, you got to make the pictures look that way. Because how you look, and especially before you've really made it, is everything. You've got to make them believe you belong and they need you in the club. So how you dress, and my old booking agency broke it down to me. He was like, yo, bro, you coming in here with a pair of cargo pants and a white T-shirt, and white is, but people are paying forty dollars to get in here. Now I have changed it up a little bit. I wear cargo shorts still because they're easy for me to perform in. But I might wear a cool shirt, a Gucci belt, like you know J Jordan fives or Jordan fours or something, something like that. I might keep the same thing, but I try to jazz it up a little bit. And you have to do that, man. What you look like is everything. Um, also, if you're a young, up-and-coming DJ or you're any DJ, you got to stay away from politics, man, whether that's dissing other DJs, dissing other clubs, dissing the club you in, you know, whatever it is, you got to stay away from that because you have to understand these owners are very, very sensitive, man. They are sensitive. They look at everything. Whether you think it or not, they follow you. They watching what you doing, so you have to be careful. Angry rants about the club or you're, you're taking pictures in another club when you're supposed to be the DJ for the for the other club, not cool, man. Not only is your boss watching, but other promoters are watching to see how you move, so you got to be careful with that. Now, how you do it in the club? In action. You know, there's different kinds of DJs. Straight action. D, like somebody like myself, I just get in there and I'm all about it, man. DJ Mr. C, you can check him out on Instagram too. He's about it. There are D, there are people who are in the club and they the way they, they their their image and their persona are the drinkers and the party is like game. If you go in the club and game is performing, he'll have like two bottles of like the most expensive champagne. That's how he does it. Little John the same way. Tequila shots all day. Then you got dudes who just cool and fly in the club. Just they 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 exude confidence. 
Uh, if you don't know who DJ Camillo is from Hot 97 in New York, go check him out. DJ Self from Power 105 in New York, go check him out. DJ Envy, Power 105, go check him out. Those are dudes who are like really cool and fly. And what your image is and what your image uh, will be is what people feel when they see you on the turntables. You know, and then also you got cosigns. What are you going to do to make the crowd believe that you're that dude? Okay, is it drops from from Drake? Is it drops from me? Is it cosigns? More? We'll talk about that later, but you've got to have something that makes the crowd believe that you are that dude. Your dress, the way you carry yourself, the way you talk on the mic, the drops, everything plays a part in that, man. Now, Again, you got to use what you have. So if you're good looking, run with that. Market that to the opposite sex or fuck it, market it to the same sex. I don't care who you market it to. Like, look, do whatever you want. Long as you don't put a finger in the ass of an animal or a young child or somebody who don't want a finger in their ass, do your thing, man. If you have personality or comedic skills, use the mic. That's what I do. I am not the best looking thing on the planet, but I use my personality, I use the mic, and I know what to say. If you have a lot of friends, you have to make sure they come out to your night because if you have a following, it is a better and bigger chance for you to get booked. I'll give you a good example. DJ Camillo, right, from Hot 97 in New York, when he comes out, he has a following of dudes that just go to the club when he's there. And that is very, very important and, 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 and key for a promoter that's booking him. It just is. So you have to have those kind of things in your corner when you're DJing. Now, they're not going to be that strong when you're, when you're first coming up or when you're in the mid-stages, but you still got to work on it. It is what it is. Tip number two, how you actually DJ. Now, there are different styles of playing. Now, we can break them down. There are pros and cons to each. You have impact slammers. They slam hits together. I do that, okay? I don't, when I DJ in the club, I have no fucking common sense whatsoever. I can go from fucking one dance to fucking um, something like fucking teen spirit. I don't care. I, but but also, I can get away with more stuff because my voice is the transition and I've earned the right to get away with absolute bullshit in the club. So, so there are people like me that are impact slammers. Then there are regular version DJs that only play radio versions of the songs. That's me. I don't play any other versions. I don't play remix, nothing. I play what you heard on the radio and what you hear on Spotify. That's what I play. Um, and why do I do this? Because that's what people know. I don't like to get outside of what people know. I don't like to play the trap version, nothing, man. I'm going to play what you heard on the radio, bro. That's it. Then you have blenders and acapella DJs who are really good at putting acapellas and blends together. Somebody who uh, would, would come up in my mind immediately when it comes to that is DJ Ted Smooth out of New York City. He's amazing. You can check him on Instagram. The boy, the boy can mix two. Now nah, I'm not, not going to say the boy because the, he's not a boy. He's a grown ass man. He got like five kids. Got like a basketball team of kids. So the man, the man can mix anything. He can mix fucking a truck and a salad together. He's that good. And then you have genre DJs that only play the trap mix or the moon baton mix or whatever mix it is. You have those kind of DJs. And then you have scratchers, dudes who love scratching over everything. You know, you got every kind of different DJ. You got to figure out what DJ you are and what you want to do, and you got to figure out whether that works. Now, at the same time, you can do that, and you got to be able to change a little bit. Now, now, sometimes you can't scratch in the club. Sometimes you can't do blends in the club. Sometimes you can't do acapellas in the club. It depends on what the people will take and what they will, you know, what they accept and what they won't accept. So it's just that simple. But anyway, you got to know how to read the crowd. That is the most important part of the game. You can DJ on a fucking bongo, okay? But if you don't read the crowd, you will fucking lose. So you could DJ on a bongo and fucking be killing it, okay? 
But if you don't read the crowd, you will lose, man. Like, if the crowd wants to hear fucking slow bongo and you're playing fast bongo, you, you fucked up, okay? End the story. Now, I know it sounds silly, but I go to many a club where the DJ just does not read the crowd, okay? You cannot DJ for yourself. I will play personally whatever the crowd wants to hear. I don't give a fuck if it's Frank Sinatra, Polka, Colombian dance music. I don't give a fuck if they want to hear the instrumental to the fucking uh, Association for Prostate Cancer and Gerbils. I care. I care not. I will play anything you want. Long as it is not Hitler, Bin Laden, or the devil, I play whatever you want, bro. It is what it is. Because I'm not here for me. I'm here for the crowd. And there are records that I think are absolute garbage, but I play them. It is what it is. Now, if you're traveling and you're new to the club, you got to be friendly to and respect the resident DJ. A lot of P DJs get this wrong. And a, a DJ that I heard that got it 100% right, so right, and was thinking exactly what was in my mind was Kid Capri. Kid Capri said exactly what I said. The resident DJ is your source of information on what to do. When you come in somebody's house, you, you wipe your feet on the rug. You wipe your feet on the rug. So when you go to another club, you show the resident DJ some respect. Just wipe your feet on the, on the, on, on the rug, man. Like, say hello, show love, ask him questions. That's the guy that's going to tell you what to play. If you're an asshole to him, he will let you hang. And you will die out there. Don't don't think that you're too big to fucking die because I've seen some big motherfuckers die on the set. So the first thing I do is ask the resident, what are the impact songs in the club? And and that sets my thought about what I'm going to play. Also, the resident DJ will give you the gems that react that you would never know walking in cold. So there's, there's songs. I'll give you a good example. Years ago, when I went to Louisiana to, to, to do a club, it was before Back That Ass Up. Back That Ass Up was a real hit. Matter of fact, it wasn't even Back That Ass Up. It was Huh. You know what I'm saying? It is there, huh? You know what I'm saying? It is there, huh? Juvenile. And I didn't know that song. But the DJ came to me and he was like, yo, man, you got to make sure this song goes on because the people are going to go crazy. But if I didn't ask him and I, I, and I didn't treat him like a man, I would have got nothing. I would have been in there playing East Coast hip hop and fucking dying in there. But, you know, this is what I'm saying. It's better to look stupid asking questions before the club than looking like an ass playing music at the wrong time that don't work. That's number two. Do your homework, okay? So you got to check. If you go to another city, check what's on the radio. Check what's playing on BT or whatever, the Viva, or whatever is in your country. Check it, man. Now, I have seen, like I said, a major DJ die from not showing the resident DJ some respect. Take that, take that, you, you can take it with a grain of salt, you can take it however you want, but you better understand that. As far as I'm concerned, okay, the equipment you use, okay, while DJing, since we're talking about DJing, the equipment you use doesn't even matter to me. You can play your music, like I said, on bongos, I don't give a fuck. But some promoters and owners want to see you do it on CDJs or turntables. But does the audience care? I give no fucks, personally. I Listen, I don't care if you play it on a ukulele. If you play, if you play niggas in Paris on a ukulele, they don't care, okay? If you play Shape of You or whatever's hot right now, Wild Thoughts, whatever, whatever song is hot, I Drake, Nice for What, whatever, because I'm just talking about old records, I'm just talking about the hits, but anyway, whatever song you want, Rich Kid, New Freezer, whatever you play, long as it's hot, no one cares, and if you play it on a controller, or a bongo, or a ukulele, no one cares, but sometimes, you just gotta go with what, what the, um, what the owner wants to see, so, general stuff, know your audience if possible, also know what you can and can't get away with, but don't be afraid to throw a curveball. Just make sure that it's something that everybody knows. Like, for example, sometimes when I go in the club, um, I play all kinds of stuff. I play, you know, anything. But I'll give you a good example. I was in the club a couple a couple of weeks ago, and DJ Rudroy from the UK, I was in the club doing a show with him in Ellsbury, England, and he hit the theme to power. I was like, okay, that's good. That's a curveball. Because even though it's not what's accepted, 
It's dope, and everybody knows it. Mr. C, who is a big DJ in New York City, I keep referencing Mr. C because he's actually one of my personal favorite DJs. There was a big cable commercial in in um New York at the time by a company called Optimum, and he played it in the club, and the fucking club went nuts. Because everybody knew that song because it was so catchy. It was on the fucking television all the time. So anyway, that's that's what you got to do. Do those kind of things. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure it's followed by a hit. So I would play, I used to play the, the, the um, I played the Jeffersons. I don't know if you remember the Jeffersons, uh, the theme to the Jeffersons. I also play, uh, with your bad self. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. And then I play a fucking just absolute hit because you got to come behind that with a hit. Now, if you get stuck, if you ever get stuck DJing, ask the crowd what they want to hear. I saw Kid Capri do that in, in Connecticut for a, a, a party that me and him DJ. He just he just stopped and said, yo, bro, what y'all want to hear? Y'all want to hear the new shit or y'all want to hear the old shit? What you want? And he looked around like fucking he was going to slap somebody in the throat. And somebody said, I don't want to hear new shit. Next thing you know, he was playing the fucking hits. And he murdered it. Like, so, you know, that that's that's dope. You know, I listen, for me, I watch everybody. I pay attention. I don't steal from them, but I pay attention. We're going to talk about that later on. Tip number three, the mic is your friend. Everybody plays the same fucking songs. Bottom line, it's how you set the tone that makes you different. When you get on the set, how you address the crowd is one trillion percent key. Okay, I will do it for you with my custom drops pack, and that's a, a fucking cheap, shameless plug, but that's what I do. That's what my custom drops packs are about. They're about setting you up so that you can do your thing. You know what I'm saying? You must make people pay attention and take notice. Now, in this, now it's the spirit in which you come out the gate talking that makes them want to buy in and makes them want to be there. They stay there. They believe in you, and that makes it easier for you to rock when you're rocking people that are popping bottles and dances, and, and, and dancing. That makes owners happy, and that shit brings bookings. Now, if you're not good on the mic, you must work to at least get decent because the time of the silent DJ is over. That shit is finished, man. Facts are you better learn the mic or get drops and a combination of speaking a little. Again, that's a cheap, shameless plug. I gives no fucks. You you got to understand, playing songs is not enough. You got to move people, make them jump, make them feel emotions through the music. For example, um, you know, when, when you go, one, one, two, three, four, everybody fucking jump. Or like when you play Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill, the, the intro to his album, it's how you deliver that emotion that's going to make people rock with you. You got to know your songs. You got to have personality in between them. For example, like with me, Chris Brown, these hoes ain't loyal. I always say, y'all niggas ain't shit either. Like, just, just, you got to know your song. And number two is always be for the women because there's more women in the, men, in the club than men. And if the women are not on the floor, the men are not on the floor. Okay? You want to make sure a club is popping. Get women on the floor. Because if not, you're going to have a bunch of dudes on the floor, and that shit is absolutely not going to work. Now, also, study the best. Take the people that you respect and study them. Don't take their shit, but study them. For example, I study DJ Hollywood of Harlem, New York. He is the godfather of this entire shit. Hollywood. Hollywood begat Dougie Fresh, which begat... DJ Cool or myself, and I, I'll beget somebody else. So whatever the case is, he is a Brucey e. B. Dudes like that. Like you got to study the legends. And Hollywood is a legend. He's one of the first people to do crowd rocking. And you need to go read his book because he was actually before Cool Herc. But you wouldn't know it if because he didn't he didn't publicize himself like that. But um, again, you study the concepts, you don't steal. And every athlete studies tape, so why shouldn't we study tape? Crowd Participation 101. Think of the things that everyone in the room can agree on and say it. That's what I do. Again, you must be able to use the mic. So I'm going to tell you this. Simple. Learn to use it or get someone to talk for your ass, okay? Which brings me to this. 
Fat Man Scoop, custom drop packages for DJs, also businesses. I do them for businesses. I do them for in-game presentations, sports teams, cheerleaders, everybody. It's for everybody. So I'm going to break down the history of the drops, why they're so expensive, and why, you know, why am I charging everybody so much, what it does for you, the pricing, and what you get. So let's go. The history of custom drops, right? Here I am, fat man school, fat guy, years ago, worked for Tommy Boy Records, right? All right, so I'm the head of rap promotion, House of Pain, Naughty by Nature, Coolio, De La Soul, and I promoted a bunch of motherfuckers that never made it, you never heard of them, and so what? Forget it, it didn't happen. But back then, the way to get DJs to play your song was to give them a shirt. It was much more simple than it is now. Like, now you got to do all kinds of wild shit, which I'm not going to talk about because that's not this webinar. And you gave them a custom radio ID. Yo, this is whoever the hell, and you're rocking out with DJ, whoever the blank is, right? And I would take artists to the station, usually guys who never made it. I mean, fucking guess why? They would do it like they were drinking NyQuil or getting a fucking enema. Hey, I'm so and so, I'm rocking with DJ. Nobody want to, nobody ain't playing that shit. You know, I would have to beg them to do it right so at least it sounds like you know the DJ. How I got to beg you to fucking help yourself? But I would take Naughty by Nature to the station, and they would kill it. And I said to myself, that's the way you need to do this. And if I ever became an artist, that's how I would do it. Because I watched Tretch and Vinny and KG operate like fucking professionals, like fucking like assassins, special ops, fucking black ops, or whatever the fuck video game it is, right? And I said, if I ever became an artist, that's how I'd do it. And I needed to make songs to put my brother through college. So that's the second part of this. My brother was going to college. My family didn't, they, you know, they were middle class people, but we didn't have $50,000 a year to put nobody through no Hampton University. And I needed to make songs to put my brother through college. I heard DJ Cool do Let Me Clear My Throat. And I was a disciple of Dougie Fresh when I was young, growing up as a rapper. I was like, fuck that, I could do that. And I got with the Crooklyn Clan, okay? I got with the Crooklyn Clan, and um, I knew DJ Riz from being a record promoter, and he used to be the DJ for a guy named Wildman Steve. Riz is a fucking legend in this business. Bow down when you fucking see him. And uh, that's Scissor Hands, and that's Riz. And, um, you know, we still we have our shit with each other, but I still love them like brothers. Um, it is what it is. And, and I'm proud to have worked with them and fucking done records with them because I probably wouldn't be at the place that I am today. I'd probably be a great radio personality, but I wouldn't be the Fat Man Scoop you know for Fat Man Scoop Crooklyn Clan. There is no Fat Man Scoop on that level without Crooklyn Clan. But anyway, I had to go to radio and do custom IDs. And because I knew what I wanted to do from Naughty by Nature and how it should be, I fucking killed them. And in the radio world, that was like legendary shit. Like everybody had drops. Ka uh, uh, fucking, fucking, um... Khaled, I gave him to everybody, but anyway, DJ AM was the main dude at the time, and I just want to say rest in peace to AM, he was the man, he was like the Calvin Harris of that time, he was one of the best ever, this guy was fucking DJ with a cigarette in his mouth, and, and fucking be catching the transitions and everything, guy was fucking amazing, anyway, he asked me to do the radio IDs he heard on Power 106 in L.A., because he used to live out there, so he would hear me do, like, Power 106, Big Boy, and, you know, whatever I was saying, he asked me to do them. And I did drops for him and Travis Barker. And by the way, one of the first people I ever did a drop for was Steve Aoki. When Steve Aoki was a hip-hop DJ, okay, go back, and, go back and investigate that, all right? That's why I have such a great relationship with him, because I've known him for years. And... What happened was when all these DJs heard the custom IDs that I did for AM, because he was the man at the time, that's what got us here with everybody asking me for a drop. So now here's the questions. I know you got questions about these drops and what's going on and how much they cost or whatever. I'm going to get into it now. Why are you charging this, number one? And number two, why are these so expensive? Well, here's the answer. Because I fucking want to, okay? How about that? Because I fucking want to do it, and I do what the fuck I want. It's jokes. Relax, okay? It's just jokes. I'm just bullshitting. It's, number one, it's extremely straining on your voice to do this. You do a couple of these a day, and you can't talk. 
You know, I don't just walk in the booth and say anything. I don't just say, hey, man, are you rocking with DJ, whatever. I put my heart and soul into making a pack for you that not only makes you sound good, but tailored to your needs exactly. I am co-signing you with my voice and brand, okay, when I do this. It's immediate energy, and it's an immediate boost in the venue when you, when you play it. And I take time to write it, either alone or with you, and I voice it. And at the end of the day, it fucking works, and it works for people for years. I was just on a flight with DJ Premier, okay? And Premier was like, yo, man, do you understand that I still play your drops, and it's been like fucking 10 years? Hey, it is what it is. When it's good, it's good. And for example, in order to understand this, you got to watch the whole six minutes, okay? And matter of fact, you know something? I'll put that up somewhere else. But I'm going to give you the general example here, okay? Here's the general. Right now, the regular drops pack is like 300. So I just say your name, and you're rocking with, you know, Fat Man Scoop, your DJ name. And then I say, yo, but you know. Dr. You know, Jason Jam. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I did for you. Yeah. And then, yo, you're rocking, but you, but you didn't pay. So uh, you let them know that. That was um, and then you say, yo, you're rocking with blah, 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 blah. I'll do a drop like that. But, like, with Frankie right now, we're sitting down. And for the drops pack that he's getting, it's a little more expensive. I'm taking all his information. I'm taking everything about him, and we're customizing a drop for him. So I made I made an open and set drop for him. Because he does um, weddings, I'm doing a drop that basically talks for him to bring the the bride and the groom in. We're doing call to action drops. DJ Frankie J says, hands in the air. I'm saying his name 30 different ways. Frankie J! You know, like all of that kind of stuff. So it's pretty much 6 to 12 minutes of raw audio. It's not just me just phoning it in. And I've been sitting here talking to this man for 15 minutes trying to get as much information that I can from him to make his drop the right way. Because listen... If you're gonna spend that kind of money, I, I take this seriously. I don't do this all the time, and I only do it for the serious investor only because I'm trying to make you look good. I'm not just throwing up anything. Yo, DJ Jason Janai says keep rocking. Anybody can do that shit. I'm do I'm, I'm trying to make you look good, so I take pride in my work. How long have I been sitting here with you? About 15, 20 minutes. It's, it's, it's about making it yours. So you're, gonna, you're, you're paying for an experience with right. him, and he's going to make it the right way and, for you. And, and so it's thing, like tailored for your for you. It's for you. tailored for you. And then the most important thing about it is that if you break it down to per time that you use it. You could use this for 10 years, 20 years. Yo, that drop I used today was yeah. is 10 years old. It's yeah, still so, fresh. So I'm think about that. that, man. You just use it. And, 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 and the reason that I make the price point the way it is, because I want people to be serious, and I don't believe in just giving it to everybody and anybody. It's supposed to be something that's worth something. So that's why I do it the way that I'm doing it. The only thing that I don't do with these drop packs is if you're going to use it to put it on a record, you cannot do that. You have to call me, and that's something completely that's... different because you're clearing something. But other than that, this is it. This is for the culture, and I do it because I'm serious about it, and I love what I do. And if I'm going to take the time to do a drop, I'm going to be ex I'm really, really serious about it. It's not a game. It's, it's something that's supposed to make you look good, and honestly, it's supposed to be something that sets you apart from the next guy. Because anybody could do your drops, but Fat Man Scoop is not. And I'm talking about myself in the third person. That shit is like, <laughs> that's like print shit, you know, like, I'm like yeah, print somebody. Yeah. Scoop's Yo, doing some fucking Spanish shit over here. Man, you gotta do it, man. I'm trying to write some, I'm trying to write a drop for this man that's gonna make him look good. So I can't just phone it in. I gotta, I gotta work with you. I gotta get what it is that you need, man. This, so, is, this is to make you look good. Where they phone Mubaton. So you got you got the the general gist of that, man. So let's let's move let's move on because it's like six minutes of that shit, and Jason Janai is just sitting there and he's looking like a sex symbol. He's doing his whole David Beckham shit, and and me and Frankie were talking. So let's let's move on. Price it, all right? The gold drops pack is three hundred fifty dollars. Fat Man Scoop, your name, Fat Man Scoop, whatever your name is, and you know one regular drop. This is blank. And you're rocking with DJ blah, 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 blah. And then I give you like two one-line drops. Uh, yo, DJ so-and-so, let's go. Or something like that, right? The Platinum Drops Pack is $7.99. And it's everything in the Gold Drops Pack. Three call to action drops and chants. Different chanting of DJ's names with different inflections. 
um, Iconic starter DJ set drop, the one that I'm known for, four custom lines of drops, custom chants. Also, I have a 20-minute FaceTime, Zoom, Google Hangout, or whatever you communicate on face-to-face to write the drop with you so you get exactly what you want. You pick what you want me to say, and I say it. It's highly customized to fit your DJ set, in-game performance, or business. All right? Anywhere from 6 to 12 minutes of raw audio, and that's me screaming at the top of my lungs, and that shit hurts your throat, period. You know, I don't want to sound sexual, and it's not no sexual shit, but it does hurt your throat. And that, forget it, because I'm thinking about all kinds of stuff I shouldn't be thinking about, but forget that. I do this whether you're a club, DJ, business, arena, venue, stadium, cheerleading squad, whatever it is, I do it. All right? The only exceptions for me that I don't talk about, Hitler, Bin Laden, devil. No drops for them. Okay? None. Jesus? Let's take a minute on Jesus to kind of fix the vibe right now. Just fix it up. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's get to testimonials, right? I sat down with Usher, and Usher wanted a drops pack for me from his live tour. I voiced it for him. He cut it up, and it became this. And actually, it was so good, he actually told me, yo, man, come out and start performing it and be the DJ. So this is what happened with me sitting down with Usher. This is just like a, 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 a drop pack you cut. So basically, it's more to that, but I'm just going right through it. So just an example. Same thing with Hardwell, man. This is what this is what I. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Miami Ultra Music Conference, crazy. Oh, she needs a festival, my bad. Tell him nothing. Very good night in Miami. Another one. Another one. This, this is this is Steve Aoki. That's how he starts his set. Now it says put testimonials here. Look, I'm I'm fuck fuck the big guys. Okay, we're gonna deal with just regular people that you can look at and say, yo, that guy's just like me. So first of all, as part of purchasing the golden drop plat, platinum drops pack, all right, you're gonna be part of my group that I'm setting up called the Party Army. Most people I do drops with, I talk with anyway. I do business with them and other stuff as well. Um, like my man, almost famous Chad in in um, San Diego. You know, sometimes they call me for extra stuff. I just do it because I'm because once you've done it with me, it's almost like you're part of my family. So I'm I'm putting all of those guys together that I rock with and people like yourself to purchase drops. And I'm doing a Facebook group, a DJ community, worldwide international DJs from the U.S. and abroad, where we just talk shop, talk about music, share music. Whatever I receive, you receive. So if I wind up getting an exclusive remix, 
on the on the email list, it's going to you. Boom. We talk about DJing, business and marketing, issues that we all go through. We get feedback from other DJs. Just talk to people. And I'm going to be starting a conference call where labels will come in and get your feedback and talk to you as well. It's question and answers. Basically, basically, I'm putting a team together. The party army. And just imagine it's like 500,000 of us motherfuckers fighting. What I get, you get. And that's going to actually be one of the bonuses of purchasing uh, a drops pack. And I just believe in strength in numbers. Don't be part of the not cool crowd. Like, okay, look at this pie chart, okay? These are DJs who have the drops and are part of the community. This is you over here looking like an asshole because you didn't get it. You get the point. Come on. Don't be an asshole. It's jokes. Relax. Well, nobody's saying I said they were an asshole and they, they suing me or talking on Facebook. Look, it's a joke, man. Listen, anyway, you do the math, because I'm getting ready to get out of here, and I'm going to leave you on this note. You do the math. You buy once, you cry once. Can't take no shortcuts, man. You buy one time, you cry one time. If you do it the bad way, you're going to wind up doing it again. If you buy cheap drops, you're going to wind up doing it again. Even me, when I buy once, I cry once. I don't buy bullshit. I buy whatever the... Most quality thing is the, the, the most quality product I can, and that's it. It lasts. When you try to go around and make shortcuts, you always die in the end. You wind up paying again. Now, people who have drops from me, like DJ Premier, they've been using them one year, 13 years, two years. They've been using them forever. And if you break that down to per use, it's actually cheap, and it makes you stand out. And listen, if people didn't ask me to do this 50 times a day, I would know that this is not valuable. This is a highly valuable tool to use in the club. You get to be in the Facebook group and community. You get access to music, remixes, acapellas for me and other people in the community. And for the value, it's worth it, period. And if you're serious about your business, you use serious tools. That's just the end of it. That's just what it is at the end of the day. Listen, you can be cheap if you want, man. But cheap don't get you nowhere. And and, and if you if you're going to... If you're gonna be good at what you gotta what you're gonna be good at, you gotta use quality things. I don't walk in I don't walk in the club with a bullshit computer. I have the best computer right now, which is the the touch bar Mac with the one terabyte of storage, everything, the fastest Mac. I don't just walk in with any Mac. I know that when I'm doing this, I gotta be serious about it. It is what it is. You're serious about your business. You use serious tools. And listen, just for staying here to the end, here's the offer, all right? If you click the link on the following page, you get six of your fellow DJs to sign up to my list. Your name is going to be entered in the contest to win a custom drop for free. How about that? Every month, I'm going to give away one or two drops pack. Now, that's my version of being charitable and Jesus-like. Also, I give you a link to my DJ pack. With all the new remixes I've done, all you got to do is go, I'll give you the email address. Matter of fact, I don't have it right now. I'm actually bullshitting. I don't have it right now. But I tell you what, when you sign up on the link, you'll be on that list and you'll get it anyway because I'll be sending it to you. By the way, follow me. Instagram, at Fat Man Scoop. Twitter, at Fat Man Scoop. Facebook.com, Fat Man Scoop. And I'm just going to say this before I leave. There is a link... Basically, matter of fact, if you have not watched, I mean, if you have not signed signed up, go right to your left. Right to the left of this video, you put your name, you put your address, you put your your email address, and you put your IG handle. Because I do, I do hit people in the DM on a regular, man. So I may just come out of the clear blue sky and hit you up. And that's that. On that note, I want to say thank you very much. I love you. Peace. Hakuna Matata. Kumbaya. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's that. Go check out the information. Now you got it all. You go do you with that information. In Jesus' name, amen.